All right, it is November 26, 2018, and we are here for our very first podcast. My name is Jason Mao, and to my left is... I'm Melanie Gibb. Melanie is awesome, for those of you that don't know who she is. She has some amazing, amazing abilities, amazing gifts. She is what we in the business call a gatherer, and people are naturally attracted to her because of just the light that beams out of her. The first time I saw her, I knew instantly that she was a gatherer, and she is. she's become basically the point person here in the southwest area for like-minded people to start focusing on greater light of knowledge and learning a lot about themselves and about the Lord and what it is that he wants from us. And so I am honored to have her to my left. Thank and you. Also with us today is... Lori. And Lori is so cool. Uh, Lori and I met in a very, very unique situation. And real quick, Lori, let's talk about that before we start, because um, people don't even know who you are. Well, people in the know know who you are, but (laughs) one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast is so that we can spread the light of knowledge and help people learn about who they are and find their gifts and draw closer to Christ. And what happened to you was pretty unique, and how we ended up in the same room together is even more unique. So can you uh, can we start off with that? We can. Um, it's so fun to be here with Jason and Melanie. I love them so much and grateful for them and all their service that they do. Um, I feel like that I work for the Lord. I feel like I have turned my life to Him from circumstances that have happened to me in my life, and Um, I ask him who he wants me to meet, who he needs me to go to, and what he wants me to do. And I was sent to the temple on a certain day to get a message from someone. And um, in walked Jason Mao. And when I looked at you, when I looked into your eyes for the first time and, and really saw who you were inside, I instantly knew you're one of us, you're a gatherer, (laughs) you know, you, you get it. You understand that there's something bigger going on here than just church on Sunday, that this is, this is, this is the end times. And, and, and you are awake, you are prepared, you are moving in that direction. And I saw that in just, just a, a half a second of that, that brother and sister connection that we made. And I just knew right away, I had to get you in touch with Melanie And we needed to connect somehow. Um, And so that's how (laughs) one thing led to another. And then, and then Melanie, you got the idea to start doing a podcast so that we could kind of just spread the good word. Yeah. So once, um, and I've known Jason for a while now and meeting Lori, I knew that there was a message that we needed to share. And one of the things that, we all have in uh, common is we have all been changed by Jesus Christ and we've all woken up. We've gone through some incredible trials. And so I knew that there's many people that are becoming aware that either they want to be more awakened or they already are beginning to be. And so they wanted to learn more about some of the things that we've gone through, some of the trials that we've come gone through to help us um, have that mighty change of heart. And I've been wanting to do this for a very long time, about 10 years ago. I had my experience with the mighty change of heart and have started to write a book about that experience. Very cool. Yes. And That's so a, writing books is a, it's a, it's a difficult thing to do. <laughs> uh, I'm speaking from experience here. Right. And so we thought it would be fun to start to share some of those things that we've learned with each other. And so today we wanted to get together and start to share our journeys individually. And we were going to start out with hearing a little bit more about Jason's journey because Jason, um, we've, many people have heard him throughout the valley and through the nation. He's taught um, the youth all over the place. And, but a lot of times we don't, people don't have the opportunity to ask him certain questions about that particular journey and how he got to where he has gotten. And so we thought we would give an opportunity for him to start sharing 
uh, some of those experiences in a little bit different perspective, a little unique way today. Yeah, and that's one of the one of the issues that, again, one of the issues that I've come across going all over the country and talking to people is my time is real limited. I try to be as generous as I can, but you know, when you have to catch a plane, you have to catch a plane, and and so a lot of people are left wondering and wanting and and needing to know more and how okay you've given us this thing this warrior ethos now what and so one of the things that we're trying to do with this podcast is take it to the next level if you will explain what the warrior ethos is and how it applies not only to my life but to melanie's life and to Lori's life and then we're also going to have uh guests come in as often as possible so that we can get their perspective also on what it means to be a true warrior not necessarily a war fighter um, we're not talking about being big and strong and carrying a gun. We're talking about how you live your life. The whole idea behind the warrior ethos is, uh, uh, and the word ethos is an old word, and it means character. It means what do you stand for? What is your what is your belief system? Is it either as an individual or as a group? And so what do we as Latter-day Saints, what do we as, as Christians, what do we as followers of Christ believe, and how do we get from point A to point B? You know, how do we become sanctified and ready to stand back in his presence, which is very difficult to do because everything on this earth is designed to distract us in some way, turn our face away from Christ. Um, and so having this, this creed, this, this standard, this ethos, if you will, helps us stay on, in, in, my, in my opinion, helps us stay on this covenant path, helps us move forward and try to be more like President Nielsen has asked us to be more, you know, home-centered in our belief system instead of relying on the arm of flesh, you know, uh, have that personal relationship with the Holy Ghost, have that personal relationship with Christ so that we can receive personal revelation. We're not, we're not saying revelation for the church. That's the prophet's job, and we absolutely keep our eye on the prophet. But we're also entitled as, as individuals and as mothers and fathers to have personal revelation to guide our families and guide ourselves down this covenant path. And there's really only, everybody has a different terminology for it, a different language for it, but there's really only one way back to Christ. And in the, in the warrior language, it, it's the warrior ethos, and it's having this creed, this standard, and this way of living. And, uh, and so I think it's really cool that we get an opportunity on a, on a mass scale to not only talk about this, but now people can send emails and ask questions and and link up with us on on Facebook and on Instagram and and be able to 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 ask these questions, these follow up questions, and not only that, but inspire each other. They can tell us their stories. We can read their stories uh, to other other people, and other people can gain strength from your own personal. Uh, uh, journeys that you've been on and the tragedies and the triumphs and the sadness and the, and the, the things that you've overcome to help other people find that covenant path. And I know that we have uh, an email site. Do we have that written up? Can we have that? Time to warrior up at gmail.com. Okay. So that's pretty simple. Time, all one word, time to warrior up at gmail.com. So along the way, while we're doing these podcasts, if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns, if you'd like to tell us your story, if you'd like to have us read something to inspire other people, now remember it has to be church standards. Um, <laughs> so let's keep the cuss words to a minimum. Or um, at all, and none at all. Or none at all. That would even be better. <laughs> but we'd be happy to, th we're not on this journey alone. We're on this journey together. And we want to share um, this journey with other people. And so this is a group project, and all we are doing is trying to facilitate this. So as we go along, if you guys hear something that you want to comment on, um, if you want to expound, if you want to help us understand, because I, I know I am not an expert, and I do not claim to be an expert. Matter of fact, I learn most of my life lessons by failing, not by succeeding. Uh, and so if there's anything I'm good at, it's falling down and then trying to get back up. Which is all of us, right? None of us are claiming to be experts, but we do love the Lord and we do want to share. We do love the to teach people and to uplift and we love to hear your stories. They're uplifting to us and we're gathering together as saints, as brothers and sisters and preparing for the second coming of Christ. 
We want to be there together and we want to be there strong together. And we appreciate Jason and his warrior ethos because it applies to everybody in their life. You know, we're mothers with lots of children. We're sisters, we're aunts, we're daughters, we're friends. So it, it applies to everybody. And I want Jason to elaborate a little more on that ethos as well. I also wanted to ask you, Jason, I mean, this is my opportunity to uh, really kind of delve into you a little bit more. We've all heard him speak. Those that have heard him speak have heard him share a certain message. But there are details in that message that I want to know about, that the listeners want to know about. And that is, is when you were on your back, you couldn't walk. What did that journey sound more like? Like the nuts and bolts, the hard moments that you were like, how did Christ come in? How did you have a breakdown that, that drew you closer to him? How did that journey, as it spiraled down, how did it spiral back up? I want to know more of that because that's why you are who you are right now. Right. And, and absolutely, I had to go through that to get to this point. And I, am, I wasn't as grateful while I was going through this trial as I am now for the trial. Um, I felt a little, a little abandoned. And I felt a little abused, and I had a hard time while I was going through it understanding uh, what was happening to me. And uh, we should probably recap a little bit because there may be listeners that don't know. I was um, I was working as a I've been a soldier, a police officer my entire adult life. Uh, six months after I got home off my mission, I joined the United States Army, and um, I retired from the Phoenix Police Department back in 2017. So a little over a year ago. So my entire adult life, I've had a gun in my hand, and all I know is how to jump out of airplanes and kick in doors and arrest bad guys. That's, that's the vast majority of my existence was spent doing that. And I was uh, in a fight in a, in a dark alley in South Phoenix, which is, for those of you that know the, the city of Phoenix, Arizona, South Phoenix is the place to be if you want to be a cop. It's uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like an episode of live PD or cops every single night, you know, there's gunfights and dog and dog bites and car chases and donut runs and, and, you know, everything that comes with, uh, with just good old fashioned rock'em sock'em police work. And I loved it. It was absolutely the place for a guy like me to be. Um, I was, and, and I like saying this and no pun intended, but I was like a pig in mud. You know, as, as I was home, I was absolutely where a guy like me needs to be because we were kicking in doors and, and taking names and, and just, you know, having the time of my life. Well, I was, I was um, in a foot chase in a dark alley with a, with a dangerous felon, and I ended up in a fight with this guy in this alleyway, and it was just me and him, and uh, we ended up just beating the mustard out of each other. Um, and when it was all said and done, I had I had I'd gotten injured so badly that what I had done is I had detached both of my hamstring muscles from my pelvis bone, ripped them both completely off. And I, uh, you know, long story short, I lost the ability to walk and it took me about three years to learn to walk unassisted. I had to start all over again, had to have both my hamstrings reattached. Uh, it takes about a year to recover from each surgery and they can only do one leg at a time. So I was, I was hopeless. I was helpless there for a little bit. Um, after, after one of the surgeries, um, my wife divorces me, and I am left um, convalescing. I have to lay flat on my back, completely motionless for a couple of months as scar tissue forms over my, my injuries. And, uh, and so I had ended up in my mom's sewing room on a child's day bed is where this big, strong police officer <laughs> ended up. Uh, and all I could do was just lay flat on my back and watch the ceiling fan go around. And then I had issues with the city. Um, the city doctor said it was a pre-existing condition. And they said, come back to work, but I couldn't walk. And so there was, you know, some issues with that. And, and I lost the ability to pay my bills. I lost my home. I lost my family. I lost the ability to walk. Uh, and when it was all said and done, when I had hit rock bottom, and there was no place, that I couldn't fall any farther. And everything had been taken away from me. Uh, I was homeless, unemployed, divorced, crippled, and bankrupt all at the same time. And I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything about it. All I could do was just lay there and just let it, just take it. Let this whole, let my entire world just burn down around me. And as I'm laying there, 
uh, in what I describe as a crockpot of my own filth, just simmering in my own garbage, uh, I broke. And it, all I could do was cry because I couldn't even get up. And so I cried, and I cried for a really long time. I cried outwardly, and I cried inwardly. And I, I, had, to, I had to make a choice because there was nothing else that could be taken from me. Um, and so I was left with two options, victory or death. And both of those options presented themselves to me. And I weighed the options, and I chose victory. And I did that because I had to come, I had to, as I was laying there, I had to, I had to decide, you know, as I'm deciding these options, okay, well, there's death, and then there's victory. And so I started, as a good police officer will, look at all the options, look at the angles, look at the, look at the pros and the cons of it, and then come to the best intellectual choice. And if I chose victory, then that would mean I would have to do a couple of things. One of them is I would have to decide whether I'm a Christian or I'm not. Up to this point, it's all just been, you know, word of mouth. It's all just been um, my opinion uh, or somebody else's opinion on what a Christian is. It was time for me to act like one, not just say I am, but be a Christian. And if and to be this guy that I have said that I am for the last 30 years, this warrior type, this can-do attitude, uh, you know, because guys like me and gals like me that do stuff like what I've done, we don't have the option to quit. Um, we're not we're not taught to come in second place. We don't we don't meet minimum standards in what we do. You know, whether it's jumping out of airplanes or being on SWAT or whatever it was, you are taught and trained and strive to be the absolute best at everything you do. And there's always options. If you fall down, you get back up. You don't have the you don't have the option to quit because there's nobody else coming. If you call for a SWAT team, nobody else is coming. You have to solve that problem. And so I just had to come to this belief, this understanding that I am who this, who I say I am. And if I am who I say I am, then that means that there's a God in heaven. And if there's a God in heaven, then there's a plan. And if there's a plan, this is part of it because I'm not in control of this. He is. And I had to let go. And I had to come to the, if, if I chose victory, if I chose to be this person, I had to let go. And I said to my Heavenly Father, I said, okay, I'm going to worry about oxygen. And you've got the rest of it. And I am just going to lay here, and I am just going to give it all to you. There is, I have to come to grips that there is nothing I can do about the divorce. There is nothing I can do about my money. There is nothing I can do about being homeless right now. What I can do is choose the light. I have control of that. And I choose to be a warrior. I choose to be this person that I was sent on this earth to be. I choose to be this person that I've trained to be for the last 30 years. And there's a heart still beating in my chest, so I still have options. And was it easy? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, this was the single hardest thing. And this is, this is coming from a life of combat. This is the single hardest thing I have ever done, is to, is to relinquish control or what I thought I had control of to this unseen power that was just now starting to truly manifest itself in my life. And as you're laying there weeping and crying and going, please just, just take the pain. And all you hear is the word peace, be still, hmm. you know, and then you start seeing images like Peter stepping out of the boat and walking towards Christ. And as soon as he took his eyes off of Christ and worried about what was happening around him is when he started to sink. Mm -hmm. When these kind of things are playing in your head, those are what we call in my profession a clue. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, his, in, in the way that I needed to hear the message, he was talking back to me. Um, other people see, you know, they... they they hear angelic voices or the burning bushes or the burning in the bosom or, you know, the still small voice, all that stuff. And I'm not, I'm not um, denying that that happens. I'm saying that he will speak to you how you need to hear. That's right. And he spoke to me like a soldier. And he treated me like a soldier because that's what I needed to hear. 
was a loving, kind, but firm hand in my life. I needed my Heavenly Father to be a father to me and to say, suck it up, buttercup. You're going to get through this. Mm -hmm. Now you man up, you warrior up, and you show these people who you are. Mm -hmm. And so I did. I did what he asked. And I clawed my way out of this mess, hand over hand. Um, I, I had a, a, all I could do was look up, look left, and look right. Because I had to hold completely still as scar tissue formed over. Um, they, they can't really reattach your hamstrings. They just kind of put them in place back where they should kind of be next to your pelvis bone. And then scar tissue forms over the top of that. And so any yeah. sort of jerking movement or sudden movement will pop, <laughs> just pop that right back off. And I'm... I have to start all over again. And so even, oh. even sitting up was, was difficult. And then there's the, the physical pain of not only having that injury, but then, you know, where the surgery sites were, it's right on your, on your behind. So you can't sit, you either lay and you can't stand. So all you can do is just kind of lay, you know, lay still. Yeah. Um, and so even something like that was difficult. And so all I could do was, was like I said, look up, look left and look right. And so on a little piece of paper, uh, I wrote, and I stuck it to the bookcase that was right next to this little day bed, and it said, goals for the day. It said, wake up, survive, go to bed. Mm -hmm. And that is all I allowed myself to worry about, was surviving. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to intake oxygen, and then hopefully these strangers will come and feed me. <laughs> because <laughs> I had, you know, uh, I was in my mom's house, but she was then diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and so yeah. she couldn't even, you know, provide the, the, the maternal care that a wounded person needed. And I would actually hear her fall down oh, in the and kitchen go. and I couldn't even get up oh. to pick up my own mother. I had to call oh. other men. I had to get on my cell phone and call other men to come to my house and pick up my own mother because I'm, I'm 15 feet away and can't even get up. So you want to talk about a humbling experience, oh. you know, asking another man to come to your house or the house that you're at and pick up your own mother because you can't. Oh, yeah, it, it's not about me man. being injured. It's about me being the alpha male, about me being the guy that looks after his invalid mother. And I couldn't even do that. Um, oh. And so it was a lot of humble pie, huge, giant Thanksgiving slices of humble pie right. with whipped cream and, and sprinkles <laughs> all and the all, toppings. Of it, all the toppings <laughs> right on top of me. Um, and so I just had to focus on what I could control. And that was my oxygen and my attitude. Wow. And I had to decide that this was going to refine who I am, not define who I am. I was not going to be an invalid. I was not going to be a cripple. I was not going to be this guy laying in this bed helpless. I am going to get through this and I'm, I'm going to make myself better. And I refused to surrender. And it was a difficult, absolutely. This was, like I said, the hardest thing. And I've been through some unique training. And this is the single hardest physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual thing that I have ever faced, dealing with all of that at the same time. Right. And so I was able to, by the grace of God, through his love, work my way out of this, learn to walk again. I rebuilt my life. I found love again. Um, I was able to, to take on the the, the machine that is the city of Phoenix and was eventually honorably medically retired from the Phoenix police department. And, uh, because I had to make a choice at that moment in time that what I call that pivot point in your life, mm -hmm. when you have to choose victory or death, whether it's emotional victory or spiritual victory or psychological victory or physical victory, we have to make that choice. And there's going to be a few pivot points in everybody's life. And I had rooted myself in this warrior mentality, this warrior ethos. So I had what's called muscle memory. I was able to respond to this problem. I didn't have to kind of come up with the solution and play catch up and be reactionary. I could be proactive in my approach. And so that's what I'm trying to do now is help the youth especially, but everybody, um, be able to be proactive in their decision making by having this code this standard, if you will, uh, a way to live so that when a problem arises, you don't have to play catch up. Um, cause in a crisis situation, you never rise to the occasion mm -hmm. and you learn this through, you learn this through tactical training. Uh, you never suddenly become an amazing gunfighter or suddenly know how to stop bleeding or deliver a baby or drive really fast or the <laughs> things that you expect 
you know, qualified tactical officers to do. That, that comes from re repetition of training over and over. And that's why cops and soldiers train so much is so that we instantly know how to respond to a threat. We don't have to play catch up. Because you know, in a crisis situation, it takes the, a normal person about a second and a half to three seconds to respond to a dangerous situation. So you're already playing catch up under any circumstance. But if you have muscle memory, if you've already taught yourself how to respond to something, whether it's physically or, or mentally or emotionally, uh, then you can you can act instead of being acted upon. And so in these crisis situations, these emotional and spiritual crisis situations that the warrior ethos may come into play, you've already trained yourself by having this mantra in your life. You already know that that you're 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 not going to train for minimum standards. You're going to always go for excellence. That the truth. This is one of my favorites. The truth is your constant companion. So it. when that moment comes where you have a choice to be dishonest or honest, you act before you have an, a, an ability to decide what to do. You're already speaking the truth because it is your constant companion. And so it's a lot of it's muscle memory. It's retraining, and it's designed to help bring out that warrior spirit in people. And that's. That's how I. That's how I got there. Was, was I hope that answered your question. I took a lot of time <laughs> talking about that. Uh, you did a great job of trying to answer it. Um, do I can't to, help. Do we need to, to go deeper than that? <laughs> well, I, I did have a thought, and I was thinking about a lot of people that are youth. I was thinking about the youth out there, and other people as well. Is a lot of people would at some point just say, "I give up on God. Why would I? Why would God leave me in this situation?" Um, does he care for me? And, and what was that mental game that said, you know, I am going to choose mm -hmm. to choose God at this time, or I'm going to fall. Like, what did that sound like in your mind? That sounded like a horrible argument, mm -hmm. like a loud shouting match in my mind. Um, that sounded like, like, two opposing drill sergeants trying to get me to either quit an obstacle or get over an obstacle. And that's, again, everybody has their own method of learning. Everybody has their own perception in life. Everybody has their own way of looking at things. And that, because that, that's who I am. That's the majority of my life was spent doing that kind of stuff. That's how I um, associated that argument was two opposing drill sergeants, these gigantic drill sergeants, intimidating, muscle bound with the big smoky bear round hats, one on one side, one on the other. And both of them are in a battle of wits over whether I'm going to quit this obstacle or get over this obstacle. And they're both making very valid arguments, <laughs> very, very valid, very valid points. One of them is saying, what's the point? What else do you have to live for? It's all gone. Why would God do this to you? And the other one is saying, why wouldn't you want to get over this obstacle? The God that you believe in didn't send you down here to fail. He didn't set you up. You know, that there's only one way back, and that's heat pressure and time. You have to purge yourself of all, you know, ungodly things. And, and quitting is, is one of the most ungodly things you could possibly do. Um, quitting on God is the single most ungodly thing you could possibly do. You know, you either you believe this stuff or you don't. And if you do get up and get over that obstacle, you know, prove to God that you are man enough to be called a child of, of the, of the most high, you know, the, it, it's a gift to, to be here and you're going to quit on that. You're going to quit on that gift. You know, and then the other drill sergeant would, would say things like, if he loved you, your wife would be here with you to help you. If he loved you, somebody from the city would go, that's not a pre-existing condition. You know, he would, he would have his angels inspire people and, and soften their hearts. And he obviously doesn't love you because of all of these things that have happened. And so that, that was a real argument. That was, and that, that took a while to get through. I'm not saying that happened overnight. <laughs> there, there were months. That took months to, to, to get through that. And I just, and I, again, I can't speak for anybody else. I can speak for me. And what I had to do was decide, I, do I believe this stuff or do I not? You know, is, am I just living on somebody else's testimony? Am I just a weekend, uh, you know, a Sunday morning uh, Christian? Or am I a Saturday night Christian too? You know, am I a Monday morning Christian? How am I going to act when it, when it gets hard? Is it hard? Yeah. 
is it time for me to decide? It is. And what I chose was victory. You know, and that one drill sergeant that was against me getting over that obstacle said, you're never going to make it over that obstacle. Look how high, look how difficult, look how, you know, you're dirty and tired and, and sick and you're never going to get over that obstacle. Why even try? You know, and then I would start up that obstacle and he would keep screaming at me. It's too high. It's too scary. You're too sick. Just go around it. Just quit. You know, and then the, the one drill sergeant that was uh, on my side just kind of stopped talking and just stood there and smiled. And every time I'd look down, he would just nod and go, keep going. You got it. And that was all that needed to be said. Because <laughs> how do I explain this? It is, it's up to you. Nobody else on this earth is going to get you over that obstacle. Everybody can stand there and cheer and they can, they can show you ways and they can give you pointers and they can say, I've done it myself. It's not that bad. But none of them are going to get you over that obstacle. It has to be you. You have to go hand over hand up that obstacle over the top and down the other side in order to achieve greatness. And if you don't want greatness, then you're denying Christ. You're denying the, the plan. You're denying the blood that he spilled for us. He suffered in vain for you if you're not willing to at least try to get over that obstacle. Because what's so cool is if you fall on that obstacle, you can get right back on that. And you can climb it again. And you can try as many times as it possibly takes to get over that obstacle. He doesn't care how fast you get over that obstacle. He just wants you to get over that, climb that monkey bar, get over that obstacle, get over that, that debilitating um, disease, or not disease, but your addictions. Get over the problems with pornography, self-doubt, you know, all the things that hold us back from, from having a, a true relationship with Christ. He's begging for us. He's pleading for us to get over that obstacle. But he can't do it for us. We have to do it ourselves. And in my mind, that's what I saw was this, this argument, if you will, between good and evil. And I was, <laughs> I was stuck in the middle getting an earful from both sides. And once I made the decision, evil got harder and good got encouraging. You know, he didn't need to yell at me. He didn't need to do anything like that. He just said, keep going. You got it. Hand over hand. I'm going to fall. I'll be here to catch you, and we'll do it again. Well, thank you. I, Lori and I have been through to, through things just like you have, but differently. And all of us are supposed to go through something, I believe, at least that's my own opinion, that will make us either turn to God or make us turn away from God. And one of the headspace fights that I've had to go through is who's in charge, Melanie? <laughs> who's in charge? Yeah. Um, Satan or you? Or are you going to let God help you? Every time I tried to say, I can't do this. This is too hard. It just felt hopeless and helpless. And it felt horribly dark. And that was not interesting to me. No. And it's, a, it's interesting when you, when you look at it from an eternal perspective. It's not as helpless and hopeless as what Christ went through. Right. You know, it's perspective. And it's really interesting to see those perspectives from the other side. When you look back at that obstacle and you go, well, that really wasn't that bad. I have a lot of energy to spare. What's next? Because who's on the other side of that obstacle? That's your relationship with Christ. He's over there waiting. And we came to this earth, you know, Jason does a great bit about this when he speaks to the youth about the pre-mortal life and all the things that he would be expecting when he got here. And I just loved it because we're all here. And in this day in 2018, um, we're here to exercise our agency. We're here to learn and to grow. And there's not one person out there, not one person who isn't having personal challenges. Now, Laura, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Everybody is facing their own, what's called an Abrahamic trial. That's right. We all have to come to that point where we have to decide who's in charge. And if, if he's in charge, then this is part of the plan. And it's agency, right? So, And it's our own individual selves. So you really can't decide for your husband or wife. You really can't decide for your parents or your kids. Each person came down here to exercise their agency and to overcome those obstacles. And we all wanted to do it. I feel like... We all had that desire to come here to get over that obstacle to get to where Christ right. is. And you can't do anything for anybody else until you are squared away yourself. 
until you have gotten over that obstacle yourself. You can't stand on this side of the barrier and tell everybody else to get over it. If there's, <laughs> it's no big deal if you haven't done it, it yourself. I never did it, but you can do you it. You can do this. I'm it's, a cheerleader. You can do it. Yeah. You know, the, the scriptures are replete with the, with the verse to cleanse the inner vessel. And that's that, right. is, that is where, that's ground zero. That is the impact point. It has to start with you. It has to start with your own personal testimony. If you want to be this warrior, this modern-day warrior, if you want to be the there for Christ on his side, then the first thing that you have to do is cleanse the inner vessel. And I had to show my kids by my example about how Christ could change me. Instead of worrying about what they could or couldn't do or if I wasn't good or good enough for them, I had to really focus on how Jesus Christ could actually change me. Right. And so I look forward to sharing that in another uh, podcast that we're going to do together, a little bit more about my journey. And then Lori will also do that as well. Yeah, we're all here supporting each other because we have all been to the bottom rung and the Christ pulled us out of that. Yep. So we all have that same story that we want to help inspire other people. If you are in the pit right now, we want to help you reach out and yeah. get over those obstacles. And, and being a member of our church is just where we go to church. These are eternal principles. This is, you don't have to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints to appreciate these principles and use them in your lives. These are, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ given to you from a warrior's perspective. And so regardless of your faith, where you go to church, who you pray to, these, these are eternal. This is natural law. These are the laws that govern the universe. This is how you're successful regardless of where you pray or, or who you pray to. Which is what I love about the warrior ethos that you're going to go over for us, hopefully soon, because it really can help every single person, man, woman, and child. And it's just a, the ethos helps each person just become the warrior they can be, right. not the warrior Jason is. None of us want to chase a guy down a dark alley and have so suffer the injuries so that fun. you suffered. <laughs> Having, getting paid a lot of money to beat people up is... No, it's and that's just one small aspect of law enforcement. But being able to help people is what I really enjoy doing because when people call for a cop, it's usually the worst moment of their lives. Yeah. And to be able to go there and help them resolve their issues, and sometimes their issues mean they, they need to face their problems. That may be how to solve the issue. Um, unfortunately, sometimes people don't agree with that, and it requires um, a use of force that is appropriate. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, hopefully the, the officer that's there is trained enough to know what's appropriate. But, and I'm not saying that that, that I, I, you know, I excelled at doing things like that, you know, um, making neighborhoods safe by dealing with that one person or um, taking the drug dealer off the streets or catching the, the terrorist or whatever it is. Um, that, Stuff we all do every day. Right, Melanie? Right. Well, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's perspective. It's all perspective because there's other people that are, saving the world, you know, through financial means, or there's doctors that are doing the right thing for the right reasons and maybe not, maybe backing off on the opioids and working on natural healing, maybe being, you know, mature enough to look at a guy and go, it's because you're 400 pounds and you smoke, Right. you know, <laughs> maybe we shouldn't take the drugs. Maybe you should stop with the cigarettes and the, uh, and the donuts, you know, and that's having that warrior mentality is loving somebody enough to tell them the truth, right. to look him in the eyes and go, look, this is this isn't right, and it ends with me, you know, and I because that's what Christ would do. That's right. You know. Well, we're here to tell the truth, the good, the bad, and the ugly about our lives. We're exposing ourselves because we want to help others who may feel like they've been in the same position or maybe are now, yeah, and need some help climbing out of that. And so. that's what's so cool about this medium, this podcast medium, is that we can have these discussions for a very long time about a all different types of topics and we can talk to other people through email and through social media and, uh, and give them advice from our perspective and things like that. Uh, but incorporating the warrior ethos into your life is probably one of the most significant things, uh, temporal things that you can do to change your life. And it's going to bring you closer to Christ. It's going to bring you closer to your family. You guys are going to have a change of heart. Uh, because you're going to start looking at life through through a very simple lens, and that's good versus evil, and that's the warrior 
the warrior way of looking at things. It's either right or wrong. Very difficult for a warrior to accept shades of gray because we just don't think that way. You know, it's either correct or it's incorrect. Um, and, and, the warrior, and that's kind of how the warrior ethos came to be is, is I started clawing my way out of this hole that I was in. And people would see that I was doing this and they would go, geez, Mr. Jason, any one of those things would have been enough to cause a person to quit. You know, a divorce is enough to cause a person to quit, being crippled, uh, bankrupt, whatever it was that you were dealing with. You had all of that going on at the same time. How in the world did you do that? And I would just say, well, this is to keep it really simple. Instead of going into the long explanation, I would say, this is just what I believe. This is who I am. And they would say, well, what does that mean? And I said, well, I've associated myself my entire life with warriors, and this is how we think. And so they, they said, would you define that for us? Would you help us, help my children understand what it is that you're doing and how you did this? Help me, because I want to be better at, 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 at uh, corporate America. I want to be a better educator, or I want to be a better nurse, or I want to be a better mom, or, or things like that. And what you're doing, I can see the results. And so this makes sense. How do you do that? And so I developed what's called the warrior ethos. I wrote these, these verses down um, to help explain my mentality and the way that I look at things. And they started saying, well, would you, <laughs> would you come to our house and explain this to our children and our neighbors? And so I started making little trips to neighbors' homes. And then they said, well, this is really cool. Would you come to our church <clears throat> and explain all this to our people in our church? And then they would, I would do that, and they would say, would you come back so that we could talk to more people? <laughs> you know, not just our little area, but can we get everybody in the city into that room? And then uh, they said, well, would you come to our high school? And then would you come talk to our sports team? And then would you come talk to all of my managers? And it just kind of turned into this thing that I was not <laughs> – That you were not no. expecting. <laughs> And on top of that, writing these books about Captain Moroni and the, and, uh, and, uh, the war chapters in the Book of Mormon, you know, these two things that uh, 10 years ago, if you'd looked at me and said, you're going to be a, an acclaimed author and a, and a public speaker, I would have <laughs> laughed at you and said, whatever, you know, I got to I got a door to kick. I'll, I'll be, I'm going to be doing that instead. But <laughs> the Lord often has other plans. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah. For all of us. All yeah, of us. If you think you're in control, you got, you sadly mistaken. Um, and so one of the good things about this podcast is we'll be able to talk about each one of these principles of the warrior ethos in depth. And from my perspective, from Melanie's perspective, from Lori's perspective, and then if we have guests from their perspective Absolutely. on what it truly means to be a warrior from these, from that perspective. And I also want to talk a lot about being a warrior as a mother and a wife and uh, the background that I came from, and I'm not going to talk about it today because we wanted to talk to Jason about his journey, is just a little bit about some mental challenges coming from a family that has a lot of those challenges and how to deal with life as a, a mom in this day and age and how I became a warrior yep. because of Jesus Christ. The principles are the same regardless of the, of the obstacle you're trying to overcome, whether it's in the home or in business or at school or in church That's or right. in your heart. The truth is the truth. You know, that we train for perfection. All of these principles are, are applicable to whatever you're facing in your life. So thank you so much for uh, visiting our podcast this day. And if you want to send some questions to Jason, Melanie, or Lori, please email us at timetowarriorup at gmail.com. And we are planning on doing weekly podcasts. It may change here and there, but that's what our goal is so far. So thank you so much for visiting today. Jason, thank you for sharing your story. Always inspirational to oh, me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I cannot wait to travel down this road with you guys to see where this takes us. And literally looking forward to this. This is going to be fun. We're yeah. going gonna, gonna to be given some homework. Do you want to explain that a little bit real quick before yeah. we go? I love that. Well, <laughs> a lot of times people listen to podcasts and they're, they're filled from what they've heard. Um, but then the machine shuts off and they go about their day. And they don't. there's no really any follow-up. And that's part of the warrior code, the warrior mentality, is that it's not just something you do once a day. It's not just something, you know, you're not just a Christian on Sunday morning. How do we live a Christian life on, through the entire week? Mm -hmm. and, and so the idea is after each podcast to 
put out some homework and then have people email us or take pictures or hook up with us on Instagram because they can find us on Instagram too at Time to Warrior Up. That's right. Um, and take pictures of what they're doing and share with other people uh, how they get through the homework and how they uh, personally get over their obstacles. That'll be so great, and I think it's going to help so many people. And that's kind of what people come to us and ask us when we speak together or when we're speaking, and they're like, okay, but how do I do that? How do I do that every day? How do I do that each week? And so part of what we wanted to do with these podcasts is to um, give that kind of steps that you can work on through the warrior ethos and through the warrior mentality of how to become that kind of a warrior for Christ. And so that's what we want to so are we ready for our first homework assignment? We Is that are. Where we, we have enough time for a homework assignment today? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay. So our first homework assignment for today is that we are going to either uh, literally or figuratively make our bed every day. <laughs> now, the reason why we're going to make our bed every day, that is the first thing you learn in basic training. The very You learn how to stand up straight and you learn how to make your bed. So what we are going to do, because we are now in spiritual boot camp, we are preparing ourselves for this warrior life, this warrior mentality, is that we are going to either physically or mentally make our bed every single morning. As soon as we get out of bed, we're fixing that bed. The first thing that we do in the morning, we're going to do something successful. We're going to have a task, and we're going to check that task off the box, and it's going to be something successful. And we're not just going to pull the sheets up and throw the, the comforter over and maybe lay those pillows up. We're going to make our bed. Because in, in basic training, everybody's bed is made to perfection. They actually have measurements that they pull out to make sure the fold is right, the hospital corners are correct, the pillows are exactly centered. And everybody in, in uh, podcast land that ever went through some sort of military training knows exactly what I'm talking about. And if everybody's bed... I know it from my own dad. <laughs> if, <laughs> that's right. He was a... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was a Marine, right? Yeah. Um, and if everybody's... And you look along the row of beds, if everybody's bed isn't exactly the same, then all the beds get dumped and you start all over again. And, and you would think to yourself, well, that's ridiculous. I'm learning... To, I'm trying to be a world-class warrior. What does making my bed have anything to do with it? Well, it's simple. First of all, it tells us that you're willing to follow instructions. Regardless of what you think, you're willing to do what your instructor is telling you to do. And second, it teaches, it teaches a couple of concepts. It teaches personal integrity and discipline and delayed gratification. Okay? Because you don't get to enjoy the fruits of that made bed until at the end of the day. Once you've been through all of your obstacles and you're dirty and you're tired, and what's waiting for you is a clean, comfortable, prepared bed. You know, and you know at some time, sometime during the day, that drill instructor is going to walk through that bay. And if he doesn't see perfection, every bed gets tossed. And so you don't know what the outcome is going to be for that decision until you get back from training. And so that's the same with life. You're not going to get instant gratification. You're not going to get instant rewards or feedbacks from decisions you make. It may take years before you come to realize what you've done has made a difference. And so it teaches you the concept of delayed gratification. And the third thing is, if I can't trust you to do something as simple as fold some sheets and lay a blanket properly, there is no way I can trust you to parachute out over enemy territory in the middle of the night carrying a sniper rifle and, and 30 pounds of explosives. Okay, so if you want to do the big things, you have to do the little things first. You have to master the little things before you can do the big things. And so homework for, t for, this, for this week is we are going to mentally and physically make our beds every day. Now, if you're one of those people that already does that, I guarantee you there's somebody in your house that doesn't. Okay, so now it is time for you to mentor somebody else and explain to them why we're doing this. And if, every, if, you're, if you live in your house all alone and you make your bed every morning, there's something in that house that you can do every morning to make yourself better. Now, if you're going to sit and wait for somebody to direct you and guide you, then that's not the idea about being a Christian. Figure it out for yourself. Find your own path. Ask Father what you can do to improve yourself. And spend this week making yourself a better person. If it's your bed, then make your bed. If it's your scripture reading, then it's your scripture reading. 
If it's your attitude, then it's your attitude. But there's something about your life that you can improve and become a better Christian. And there is only one way back to God. And that is by doing this, by cleansing the inner vessel, doing the little things to perfection. And then when you can be trusted with the little things, the Lord is going to give you the big things. I have to say some of the thoughts quickly is I love a challenge and B. You came to the right place. Though. Right, right. But B, how many of you that's listening, especially you young people, want direction? You're, you're dying for direction. Our society does not, you know, instill that. We, they, many people want direction, and so I think it's a great challenge. Thank you. Yeah, and this is what they can expect from a weekly podcast is we're going to discuss these things. We're going to come back and check on homework. We're going to talk to each other about how that went. We're going to talk to our fans and to our listeners about how that went with them, and then we're going to move on from there, and we're going to build upon these principles, and we're going to take you from basic training to advanced training. We're going to turn you from civilian into warrior, mm-hmm. and, but there's only – one way to do it, and that is heat, pressure, and time. This is not a weekend thing. This is not a a, a one you know one hour seminar that you can attend and your life changes. This is going to have to be a process, and you have to be okay with that because this is the plan. And I just say this is the time, time to warrior up. Here we are. We're getting started. Here we go. Week one, time to warrior up. Thank you for listening today.